Hello, my name is Agnieszka Szarkowska. I'm from the University of Warsaw. In this ILSA project video, I will give you an introduction to subtitling. Subtitling is one of the most popular types of audiovisual translation. You're probably familiar with subtitles, the lines of text usually displayed at the bottom of the screen, containing a translation or transcription of what people in the film or in the program are saying. Subtitling can be either interlingual, between different languages, or intralingual, done within the same language. Interlingual subtitles contain a translation of dialogues from one language into another, for example, from English into Dutch. Intralingual subtitles, for instance, from English to English, contain a transcription of text within the same language. The most frequent type of intralingual subtitles are probably subtitles for the deaf and the hard of hearing, also known as closed captions or teletext subtitles. In some countries, the term subtitling is used to denote the classic interlingual translation for hearing audience and the term closed captioning when talking about subtitles for the deaf and the hard of hearing. Other types of subtitles include intertitles, predecessors of subtitles, that is frames with text in silent films showing what characters were saying or explaining the action, surtitles, which are used in the opera or theatre and are usually displayed above the stage. Bilingual subtitles, which are subtitles displayed in two languages simultaneously. And fan subs, which are subtitles made by fans, usually containing extra information or explanations. From a technical point of view, two types of subtitles can be distinguished depending on whether the subtitles can be switched on and off. The subtitles that are seen only by those viewers who switch them on are referred to as closed or soft. Such subtitles are not part of the video. Instead, they are saved as a separate text file or data stream. The subtitles that all viewers will see are called open or hard as they were hard-coded in the video file. There are three different types of subtitling when it comes to the time when subtitles are prepared and broadcast, pre-recorded, semi-live and live. Pre-recorded subtitles are prepared before the program or film is broadcast. As the video material is available in advance, the subtitler can produce the text and synchronize the subtitles with the dialogues by time coding them. Semi-live subtitles are frequently used on television for live programs which are heavily scripted, for instance news. Although the news anchor is reading out the text from the prompter live during the broadcast, the text is usually prescripted and available to the subtitling team before the broadcast. Subtitlers divide the text into appropriate segments, which are later displayed live, in sync with the broadcast. Traditionally, as they have no time codes, semi-live subtitles are queued manually by a human operator. Semi-live subtitling is also used in the theatre and the opera. As opposed to the previous two types, live subtitling is done fully in real time. For instance, in live programmes such as chat shows, interviews or debates. There is no transcript or text available before the broadcast. The most frequently used technique to produce live subtitling is respeaking, which involves the use of speech recognition software. Viewers can expect the highest quality from pre-recorded subtitling, as these subtitles are prepared with much less time pressure and are expected to be error-free and in perfect sync with the video. On the other end of the spectrum, live subtitling is the most ambitious type of subtitling, as the, the subtitles must be produced in a matter of seconds. As a result, there is some delay and occasional errors may occur in the text. If you want to know more about subtitling, there are a number of great books and other sources available. You'll find the list in the reading materials for the course.